Mic check, mic check. Mic check. And my check. Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. I got Stacy and Big Drake with me. Salawama. I know that word. <laughs> and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Sabbath day calculation. Now, I need to rush this video. Um, Stacy's in a hurry, and I'm in a hurry because I'm late getting this video out. And so, Big Drake is going to be here with us today. You may remember him from some previous videos. So, he'll be entertaining us. He may even uh, share his new song with us called Forever Up. We don't know. Um, he's still working on it, but we, we'll see. <laughs> But in this video, what we're going to be talking about is how and why, and a little bit about even when, we changed the way we calculate the Sabbath day and the months and everything. Right. You remember that whole experience? Yes. We, um, yeah, 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 we went from um, doing the Sabbath day one way, monthly, mm -hmm. uh, going out and looking at the moon monthly, to a whole nother wow. way. Where we, we don't do it monthly and we don't look at the moon. Right. So, and in this video, we're going to be talking really quickly why. Now, um, I do have here that I'm the first thing to do is to talk about my testimony. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. You want me to be quiet? Okay. All right. So, think we should? Sure. Why not? Um, because of time. Well, you can run through it real quickly. Well, all right. Well, let's try. Yeah. My testimony on how I became Jewish and then how I stopped. Okay. How, I'm really, how I became Israelite or whatever you stop being when you get above being Jewish because you start off being a heathen and we all do. Yeah. You got to kind of climb the ladder. Well, to start off the testimony, we got to go all the way back to about 1995 when we read the New Testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. I could talk about my first experience doing the offering, and, but you know, that's for another video. But after I read the New Testament of the Bible, I became very popular in the churches. My stock value in churches rose really, really high, really, really quickly. You remember that, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You, you want to tell them how that happened? went from being um i guess just being a layman or nothing before i'm talking about before i read the bible until mm -hmm. after you went from being a quote nobody in the church to actually uh being a teacher yeah a popular teacher because everybody wanted me to come in and everybody you know whenever i would go to a church they always would want me to talk and mm -hmm. pray and remember yeah they would definitely want you to at least say something yeah yeah and then I read the Old Testament. Right. And they kicked me out. <laughs> Almost literally, like yeah. overnight. Yeah, it was um, uh, kind of exciting that they were there. <laughs> yeah. They kicked you out. I think that time was right around the time of um, Easter for them, Passover for us. Uh, yeah, 2014 was when they had um, realized that we were talking about keeping feast days and such. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but we actually read it way back before that. You remember we was teaching at the local church up the road. Mm -hmm. You know, we built some wreck areas and yeah. went on some church trips and seemed yeah. like everything mm -hmm. we tried to do. We, we had a lot of help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, fish fries, everything was mm -hmm. real successful. And then all of a sudden um, in 1998, I started reading the Old Testament of the Bible. And that's when I realized that we were supposed to be keeping the feast days mm -hmm. because up until that point I like everybody else was heavily involved in Paul I mean my favorite book was the book of Romans you know my favorite author was Paul right and Dinosaurs. but then that lasted until 1998 when I uh, finally read the Old Testament and realized we were supposed to be actually obeying the rules of the Old Testament including the feast days well, by the time I got to the book of Leviticus, I was absolutely sure that we were supposed to be doing those. And before I was able to finish the book of Leviticus, before I was able to even get out of Leviticus 23, I had basically went from being a heathen 
because I had no idea who the father was to being Jewish. Right. Mm -hmm. Over, yeah. Overnight. I guess we wouldn't have called it Jewish at that time, but that was actually um, the way that we probably was practicing things. Well, I read it and then I tried to figure out what was going on. Mm -hmm. I tried to figure out, okay, when are these feast days? And Google was about, uh, the, the internet was around back then, so started doing searches, went on these feast days, and I started following the Jewish uh, feast days. Right. Yeah. Right. And that only lasted for a little while before I realized that their days were off. Even before, even back in about 1998, I realized that they weren't calculating the moon correctly. They were going by this 0% moon thing, which keeps them a kind of a day early. Right. Wow. And so immediately I became an observer of the moon. Mm -hmm. Well, we see the observers of the moon mentioned over in the book of Jubilees, chapter 6. Here comes the EPS truck. Oh, yeah, we are expecting him. Oh, yeah. Thank you, everybody. For um, your gifts. Is the gate locked? Mm -hmm. The gate is locked. Oh, there it is. So, when you were observing the moon, um, you had not read in the Book of Jubilees yet. You had, you I had didn't understand read. it. I've read Book of Jubilees a lot of times. It's, I didn't actually uh, uh, understand what, a, an, what they were talking about as far as the observers of the moon until this year. Mm -hmm. But we didn't way hell it. We get all the way up to 2023. We back in 1995 when I went from being Jewish, meaning I was following the Jewish calendar. Right. Whenever they would, they, that didn't last at all because I immediately realized that their dates were off. Mm -hmm. It didn't line up with the lunar cycle. And so I, I immediately became an observer of the moon. If I want to be completely accurate, it wasn't until about 2015 when we got serious about the calendar mm -hmm. and start trying to learn about the calendar did I become a serious observer of the moon mm -hmm. by then I don't know when the switch happened um, but by night by the time we started studying the calendar I already realized that I couldn't go by the Jewish calendar and I had become what Moses was talking about here when he says um, in verse 36 you want to read it yeah it says for there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. And so because it comes in 10 days too soon, we just have a 13th month every three years, right. something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, that ain't right. That's what, the, what this is telling us is that this is wrong. Mm -hmm. And so the thing about being an observer of the moon, you do monthly observation. Right, which we did for many years. And in some of those years, we had a 13th month. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because of, like he's saying here, these 10 days. Right. You don't know what to do with these 10 days. Mm -hmm. So we just followed the Jewish community mm -hmm. and added a 13th month with them every year. So I guess at that point, I was halfway Jewish and halfway an observer of the moon. Right. You're kind of doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. until last year. When we, through the help of, you know, some of the viewers, realized that the Pentecost calculation does not match up with the Jewish determination of months, mm -hmm. nor the observer, moon observer determination of the months, not even... The Christian, no way, Muslim had no calendar of those that I mentioned. Right. The monthly, the Jewish, the Christian, the Gregorian, no way to calculate any of those m things that have months in them like that. Mm -hmm. Does the Pentecost calculation match up? Now, let me go ahead and show you that. So we'll come over to Leviticus chapter 23, where it's talking about the holy convocations, particularly the Feast of Weeks, which starts down there in about verse 9. But notice down here in about verse 11, where it starts this calculation. 
this math it starts talking about the sabbath day or the morrow after the sabbath day and then down in about verse 15 it starts telling us to count 50 days mm -hmm. and it tells us once we count these 50 days we are to come up on a sabbath day the seventh sabbath day right and then on verse 16 it tells us what to do on the morrow after that seventh sabbath day it tells us that is the time to make our Pentecost offering, the yeah. Feast of Weeks offering. Right. right. Well, this is what I'm saying, and we've done plenty of videos on this. Yeah. I don't. I can mm -hmm. maybe just draw something up um, in editing to show this calculation and how it only works if you calculate your Sabbath days on a quarterly schedule. <gasps> This one is our current schedule that we're on. Um, can't really call it a calendar because the moon is our calendar, right? right? And we have to, you know, get it our um, uh, times from it. So let's look back in spring of 2023 for an illustration of what we're talking about here. We have the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the week-long ceremony. Then we have the Sabbath day, which ends that ceremony. And then over here, we see the Feast of First Fruits, which is the day after the Sabbath day and the first day of what we see as the Omar count. So now if we start counting, he says to start on that day, the day after the Sabbath day, let that be day one. And we start counting. We're supposed to end up on the day after a Sabbath day. Or, or let's see where we end up and then we'll go back and we'll check the verses. So there we see Omar 2, Omar 9. 16 there's Omar 30 37 44 49 is over here on a Sabbath day and Pentecost falls after the Sabbath day right and without you know looking at all of the other calendars I almost use the adjective there all of the other busted calendars out there <laughs> they are, what I'm telling you is that this is the only way that Pentecost matches up and that's quarterly. Do the cal quarterly calculation. Right. Absolutely. So sometime last year, we became quarterly observers of the moon. In other words, we would go out every quarter mm -hmm. and look at the moon. And we would create a schedule similar to the one we're looking at here. Right. Well, one thing you notice in here is how we have the 0% moon information listed on this schedule or this calendar or whatever mm -hmm. but the purpose of this is for the observance of the moon mm -hmm. in other words we would start looking for the new moon to fall on the next sunset after that date right and then that brings us to the eclipse of 2023 mm -hmm. because like w when we look over here at truthofyahweh.org we can see that there was three people who sighted the moon there in Hawaii on the 15th. Mm -hmm. um, there's no more sightings. And so there are many people around the world who are still yet debating on if Atonement Day is actually on the 25th because there was nobody else that reported seeing a moon, a new moon that is, on the 15th, except for those three people in Hawaii. And that was that was about it. Everybody else had clouds. Uh, uh, well, them people had clear skies and they didn't see anything either. And so we basically had one report to rely on from truthofyahweh.org. And so there's a lot of debate now. And the thing about it, because of the eclipse in 2023, we're going to keep going. Because of the eclipse in 2023, what um, is you're going to have to sing later, all this noise. Um, for the eclipse in 2023. Stop, I'm scared he's gonna cut his hand. Hey, don't y'all need this tape measure? Go don't take it, it. Don't take it to uncle. Uncle need his tape measure. So you were saying that now there is a debate as to whether um, it falls on, the atonement day falls on the 25th or not. Yes, because there was no sighting. And so the observers in the world, they started their seventh month on the 16th hmm. the evening of the 16th mm -hmm. while we started on the 15th 
Well, when we come to Enoch, which we have to do in order to solve these debates, we're looking about chapter, I think it's 73 or chapter 72, where it's talking about the inferior luminary. This is the second law. This is another law. Um, the first law, of course, was in the previous chapter about the sun. But this one is talking about the moon. And he talks about this 30th day. Matter of fact, Stacy, if you would, would you start here in about verse four? Thus it rises and at its commencements toward the east goes forth for 30 days. So this is talking about this 30th day. And this is key to understanding the difference between being an observer of the moon and what Enoch is talking about, mm -hmm. because he's going to tell us of this 30th day. He's never going to tell us to actually look at anything. At that time, it appears and becomes to you the beginning of the month. So now he's telling us that the month begins on this 30th day. Mm -hmm. let, let me go get a little bit of an illustration right here. That would be this revision that we're working on here. This looks like uh, Rev 14.3 or something like that. But when we get around in this blue ring, it's talking about the moon we heard about this yellow ring over there in chapter one i mean or in the first chapter of the book of the revolutions of the luminaries the sun the sun and he's telling us about the moon here and he's telling us about this 30th morning right and you look how precise this is and how it fits on this clock and that's what enoch is describing he's not saying go out and look at anything mm -hmm. he's saying you don't need to what he's saying is that the you go by this 30th morning 30 days it is with the sun in the gate from which the sun goes forth 30 days is with the sun in the gate so we're looking here at what we're calling we've been calling it an instrument but i'm thinking something like a enoch clock calendar or something i don't know but you have the gates which are about right here right mm-hmm between these two areas. This is the gate in here. And what he's telling you is, is that the moon will be in that gate for those 30 days. Along with the sun. Along with the sun. The sun, this, that's where the, the gate is. The, the gate itself is the stars. Mm -hmm. They don't really move. They're like the numbers on a clock. And then every solar month, for lack of a better word, it enters another gate. So the, in other words, the sun would be, for instance, in this area right here. In this gate well while it was in that gate for those 30 days the moon will also be in that gate half of it is in extent seven portions one half and the whole of its orb is void of light except a seven portion out of the 14th portion of this light so here we see those 14 portions you have so many on this side and then so many on that side you see the portions right mm -hmm. right that's the, the new moon. You just have that little sliver. That's why you only see the new moon, very small portion of it, is because this is actually supposed to be more like a sphere okay. than a, on a flat plane. So seven on one side and seven on the other. Absolutely. And in a day, it receives a seven portion or half that portion of its light. So what it's saying is that each day, one of these blocks will be filled in. On the okay. first day, you're going to get that one. And then on the next day, the moon is going to grow to be that big. And then the following day, it'll be that big, you know, and it'll keep getting bigger. Okay. Mm -hmm. Its light is by sevens, by one portion and by the half of a portion. It sets with the sun, and when the sun rises, the moon rises with it, receiving half a portion of light. See, now we're talking about the 30th day here. Okay. And this is the key to the understanding because he told us that we're talking about this 30th day. Mm -hmm. This is the whole key. If you don't understand this, you're going to have to be an observer because that's the only way to stay on top of the new moon is to actually look for it. Mm -hmm. You have the choice. You can follow Enoch in the scripture with the warnings we got from the book of Jubilees. Right. Or you can be Jewish who don't believe in either of those books. Mm -hmm. Those are considered hidden books to hint to them or forbidden books or whatever. They don't, they don't use them. Mm -hmm. And so now they can go out and be observers of the moon. The only difference is when is your atonement day? Right. 
your day off even your day off and i'm learning now that we are actually supposed to go by this 30th day right so let's go on on that night when it commences its period previously to the day of the month the moon sets with the sun so they saying on the night this moon sets with the sun so if we come over here to timeanddate.com and look for october looking down at the 14th we see that the sun set around 620 Mm -hmm. And we see it only changed by a minute or so. Right. So 621, we'll say 621. But watch what happens when we look at the moon. We see the moon set time on the 14th is 624. And what was the other time for the sunset? 620, 621. 621. So that's within three minutes right. of what Enoch was talking about. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the previous day, it's a lot of more minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And the next day, it's nowhere close either. Right. So what Enoch was talking about and the way Enoch is telling us to do this, and this is what we have to understand is he describes this day to us. Let's go back and look what he says. When it commences its period, meaning the beginning of the period. Mm -hmm. Notice this, this is the beginning of the 30th day. Notice he says previously to the day of the month. Right. So this ain't the first day of the month. This is the, the other day. This is the day before. Mm -hmm. The moon sets with the sun. Yeah. All right. So let's go on. And on that night, it is dark in its 14th portions. That is in each half. So we're looking here on the 14th. The day previous, we see that it was 0% illuminated. Mm -hmm. That's what Enoch is saying. It is dark in its portions. So in other words, there's not going to be anything in this area. The area is going to be blackened or right. dark with the rest of the moon. Yeah. Okay? But it rises on that day with one seventh portion precisely. Now, this is where it gets really tricky, especially for those who will not understand that the day, uh, the sacred day, our Father's Day resets at sunset. I mean, they taught us in school that the day resets at what time? 12. Midnight, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there are those who can quickly understand that that's man's calendar. And then they want to start talking about how the birds start chirping in the morning and how that means to them that the day starts in, in the morning time. Wow. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they they use stuff like the fact that Mary and Mary waited to the daylight before they went to the graveyard. Well, of course. Uh, but to them, they they say that if the day starts at sunset, then they should have went to the graveyard in the middle of the night. Okay. Anyway, yeah. the birds start the birds start chirping in the morning because they don't fly at night. Yeah. They don't fly in the dark. Yeah, so. that's a good point. <laughs> But when you understand correctly that the day resets, it changes just like theirs changes to a new day at 12 a.m. Mm -hmm. Ours change to a new day at sunset. Right. When you understand that, you understand what it's saying here is that on this day, the 30th morning, when it rises, it's going to rise with a half a portion of its light. And when we zoom in and kind of see what's going on over there, we can see that little part. He says that on the 30th morning, that part right there will be shaded in. So that's his one seventh portion precisely. We see on this particular revision, which these percentages correspond to the time of the eclipse, the ring of fire eclipse of 2023. It was about 7% on that particular day. But that's the one seventh portion that Enoch was talking about. And then he says, And in his progress declines from the rising of the sun. So what it's saying there is from then on, the times is not going to match. So you remember over there when we were looking at the sunset time of the sun, it stayed at about 620, 622, 623, where we see that the moon is going to jump to 653, then, six, okay. then 726, mm -hmm. then 8, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it says from that moment on, it's going to decline. Right. So what Enoch is telling us, the way to calculate our months 
is not by observation of the moon, mm -hmm. but we look at these data points. Now, let, let me show you how easy this is when we go to the U.S. Naval Observatory's Astronomical Applications Department and we look at the fraction of the moon illuminated for the year 2023. Watch how easy this is. We can pull down a data table for the moon for the whole year of 2023. And with it, watch how easy it is. We look at October. And so when we look down in October, we see that on the 15th, it starts gaining its light again. Mm -hmm. And that's really all we need to know. You go from dark and the moon setting with the sun on the 14th. Right. And then on the next morning, it starts gaining its light. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the 30th morning. You rise with a portion of the light and then it sets with a seventh portion or one seventh of its light on that evening. Mm -hmm. At sunset, you'll see um, the new moon. And that's the key to the understanding. This 30th day, this 30th morning is key. The way you get this like this is because the moon actually has 29.5 days. There's a half a day faster to the moon. The moon is a half a day faster. Right. She's running around faster than the sun is. Mm -hmm. the, the sun is slower. So this day ends up getting straddled every single month. It works like this. Mm -hmm. That's key. Once you get this, you do not have to be an observer. One of the commenters said they had been praying. One to have an understanding how it is that they would do it if they can't leave the house. We've had many viewers who complain that they can't get out there and see the new moon. Right. Well, you're never supposed to. According to what we see at Enoch, you're supposed to understand this 30th day. Mm -hmm. And you could do it from data tables. Right. And, you know, that's why we are, you know, starting to try to put this information together. It's really important to start collecting this information from places like timeanddate.com and the U.S. Naval Observatory. Because once the sun and the moon you know start to go through their changes that we're expecting mm -hmm. then like i said all you need is data tables because all of this stuff is based on star alignments you know yeah i like that um from you that it is all based on the stars the star alignments you just like you have this 30th morning with this triangle here mm -hmm. well you have the 364 days the 91 day seasons mm -hmm. and you also have the hours of prayer here you know right. and so all of this is based on star alignments and with that, we go from being quarterly observers to using the Enoch calendar correctly, right. using the celestial calendar correctly, because what happens then is once you put these two rings together, it creates this third ring here, which is the combination of the two. That's how we get our seasons. When you have the moon and the sun together, you get the 364 day seasons, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, we'll cover that in another video. And so I guess it just proves that everything that Enoch uh, wrote down for us was precisely right. There was no errors or um, everything was exactly how it, how it was supposed to be. He left, he left no room for error. Right. He left no room. All, all we can do to get it wrong is to hide the book and get rid of it or not read the book. Just as what has been done for many, many thousands of years. Yeah, so that's why they, that explains why they did it. Mm -hmm. But praise our Father in Heaven. This book itself says it's written for us in these times. Mm -hmm. So it's a long book. I guess we get to, need to start getting to reading it, huh? <laughs> praise our Father in Heaven for His Word. All right, let's get ready to sing your song. I'm a fire, 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 fire,